Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk about XRP. And once again, this is the one day chart. We're sitting here just under 52 cents. You know, everybody's saying it's time to buckle up. They're expecting a major run-up into the elections. They're saying it's going to go on this entire week. I'm not so sure if that's going to happen. Here's the way I look at it. If you're holding XRP, sit back, do nothing, and watch and see what happens. But people are saying this is the last chance to buy XRP in the 50 cent range i don't know if that's going to happen because right now bitcoin dominance is still rising we got to wait for the price of bitcoin to start rising while dominance is falling once the dominance starts to fall on bitcoin that's what will take us into alt season and i'm expecting that to start at some point soon such crap again and again. Sorry, but XRP is dead. Crypto pundit vows never to touch Ripple's XRP again for these two reasons. You know, I see this all the time. People giving up on XRP. People saying they just sold all of their XRP. Vowing to never touch XRP. Yet in the coming months, all these same people will be right back here buying XRP at higher prices or they will come out and tell you that they never actually sold any of their XRP. So Elite Crypto first talks about the Ripple vs. SEC lawsuit and we all know how that got drug out for as long as it possibly can. But his second reason is because Chris Larson donated $10 million worth of XRP to Harris's campaign. The narrative Ripple dumps XRP on holders has now become Kamala dumps XRP on holders. Of course she's not going to hold that XRP. Of course it's going to be converted to fiat. But you could say the same thing about people that donated Bitcoin to Harris. You know, everybody picks apart XRP. Do you ever take notice to that? You know, I'm sure there was people out there that don donated Solana, donated other types of cryptocurrencies as well. They were all converted to fiat also. You know, people act like because somebody does something, that's it. That was the worst thing that could have possibly happened and I'm out and I'm done with XRP. Well, we'll see you back in the coming months. That's the way I look at it. Fun fact, less than 5% of the global population is invested in crypto. And it's true, we are early. We beat everyone here, including the institutions. And you know, we're going to watch everything unfold over time. You are going to be so thankful you got into crypto when you did. Think about the people that are going to be coming into crypto next year, the year after that. The year after that, because it's not going to end with us. There's going to be new crypto investors over the coming years. Even future generations are going to be investing in crypto. First of all, Forbes, Ripple is not XRP. What is Ripple XRP via Forbes? You know, they always call XRP Ripple. You ever take notice to that? But the reason I think Forbes just did this article, and they really break down Ripple and XRP in this article. They talk about what it's used for, how it could possibly have a major run-up, how many transactions per second can be done on the network. That's going to change through Interledger protocol. But I think Ripple, or I think Forbes did this article on Ripple and XRP right now because a lot of new people are starting to get into crypto. I see it on X all the time. Even the people that DM me, they ask me questions like, should I invest in Ripple or should I buy XRP? They don't even realize that Ripple and XRP are two different things yet. 
And if they do, they don't understand the difference between them. But you could tell by the questions that people ask. They got here recently. Here's the good thing. They got here right before a major run-up. And once crypto starts to take off, watch how many new investors flow into this space. And let's get back to the Ripple versus SEC case. You know, that case should have never happened. Take a listen to Chris Larson here. It's an established currency. Uh, and it was actually declared formally uh, a currency by the Treasury Department, FinCEN, in a settlement back in 2015, um, which, I, you know, to us, that was crystal clear. This is a currency. Uh, and as a currency, uh, it's exempt from regulation uh, under the SEC. That should be as a, a commodity, a currency, and under the CFTC. So uh, certainly to me, that seemed crystal clear. Um, but, you know, I think, um, uh, again, these are new things, even though they've been around for a while. And I know the regulators are well-intentioned, um, but it's kind of this fight on, hey, who owns the regulation of this industry? And that's fine, but, you know, uh, it, what they should be doing is making clear new rules. These are these are new technologies. And I think a bit of the problem is, um, boy, trying to fit something like blockchain and interoperability protocols and cryptocurrencies, trying to fit that into rules that were established, you know, seven decades ago. I, I always said it. You cannot use these outdated rules when it comes to newer technologies. But Chris Larson is right. Vincent said XRP is a currency. So the SEC should have never even been allowed to touch XRP in any way. It should have been the CFTC that handled XRP. And they should have treated it like a commodity, a currency, rather than trying to deem it a security. And somebody should have stepped in early on and brought that to everyone's attention. But I think it was a different time back in 2020. And I think maybe even Ripple knew they had to go through this process to somehow get clarity on the other side. And that's what happened. We got clarity. And what the remaining part of this whole Ripple versus SEC case, it's just about how much money Ripple is going to have to pay the SEC. So the Bank of Russia report, June 2024, mentions Codius Project and Ripple. Now, I thought Codius was done. I thought Ripple did away with that a long time ago. For example, based on the Ripple network, a smart contract system has been Codius. This smart contract system was created based on the Ripple network which allows automatic settlement of payments between counterparties in different countries. Former Ripple CTO Stephen Thomas for Codius ahead of its time means ILP isn't widespread enough yet for Codius to work properly and be useful. You know, it's strange that Russia brought up Codius and Russia's payment system that they want to go with has been accepted by the other BRICS members, which is why I could see them utilizing XRP. I also think they're going to utilize XLM. I'll talk more about that in another video. Let's get back to Codius. Codius will be used to manage the entire one plus quadrillion dollar derivatives market. I talked about this in the past. So what is Codius? Codius is the most advanced smart contract platform that will ever exist. The project was said to be put on hold in 2015. That was a lie. It was never put on hold. Codius will be smart contracts with integrated payment processing and a variety of privacy options. One more time. Codius will be a smart contract platform that offers multiple privacy options if required and payment processing integration. No other platform can compare. No other platform will have a direct connection to the world banking system. 
XRP and Codius are going to be used to manage the entire one plus quadrillion dollar derivatives market. XRP is not a currency. It is a store of value, digital gold. XRP is a bridge currency, but through Codius, they are going to unlock the derivatives market. This comes from scams. Thank you, David. Has Ripple also completely abandoned Codius? Is anyone working on it to your knowledge? David Schwartz said, I'm still trying to revive it. The technological pieces we were missing exist now. And I think there are some demonstrated market needs that it can address. I wish I could say more, but this is probably more than I should be sharing. So is David being silenced on Codius? And is Codius still alive and well? Here's David Schwartz once again. It sounds like you have it right. One of the great use cases for Codius is gateways between blockchains, bridging ILP, Interledger Protocol, to blockchains and providing an exchange between all assets reachable through ILP. So he already knows we need Codius. Then there's this. Ripple's first CTO, Stephen Thomas, and co-creator of the Interledger Protocol reveals that there will be a new version of Codius. Codius enables smart oracles as well as smart programs, smart contracts. So it looks like Codius may have never actually disappeared. It actually may have been going along this whole time. Also getting ready to tie in with Interledger Protocol. So let's get back to Interledger Protocol. Ripple and Interledger Protocol's unique value proposition. This diagram emphasizes Ripple and the ILP central position in the evolving financial landscape as they together bridge multiple actor coalitions. Public actors and regulators, governments are exploring CBDCs and financial infrastructures that align with Ripple's technology, making Ripple crucial to state-led blockchain initiatives. Two, private actors and incumbents. Ripple's ability to interact with major financial institutions like SWIFT demonstrates its relevance within traditional banking networks. Three, crypto and alternative currencies. Ripple technology, including ILP, facilitates links between crypto projects and the broader financial system. Ripple's central position reflects its adaptability and broad-reaching impact across both private and public financial sectors. And you see it right here. And it ties in everything. And that's why when we talk about all the money, that happens through Interledger Protocol. This also comes from Smoke. Why will central banks use the Interledger protocol? The IOP addresses all the common blockchain deficiencies. While banks appreciate many aspects of blockchain technology, not every feature aligns with their internal processes. However, IOP resolves key concerns banks have about blockchain, including scalability, transaction privacy, interoperability, and the use of digital assets for transactions. It will allow the banks to utilize something like XRP. And that's going to be game-changing going forward. And I still believe Ripple's true intentions was not only to take over SWIFT, but to capture the entire derivatives market. And the only way that can happen is through Codius. So maybe they just went quiet on Codius, but it never actually was put aside. Maybe it was building along the rails this whole entire time. Because David, when he said he thinks he might have said too much, that means that they told him you cannot go over on X and talk about this. And this is always a fun video. ILP, Interledger Protocol, equals all the money.
Take a listen. What is Interledger's total addressable market size? All the money. <laughs> nobody wanted to. Nobody wanted to feed it. Um, yeah, it's all the money because what we're really talking about with this idea of the internet of value is creating a single global payment network that connects literally everyone. It's built to serve every single person on the planet. And you know, Ripple and XRP are at the heart of all of this. But so is Stellar and XLM. Algorand's gonna be tied to ILP. Every single cryptocurrency that's gonna be part of the new financial system will also be tied in through Interledger protocol. And that's why I showed you how they connect right here. Here you see all those cryptocurrencies. And it, that makes sense because we always knew it was gonna be a handful of cryptocurrencies that were ISO compliant that would be running the future financial system. And you know, it's hard to see where we're gonna go from here because XRP is still sitting just under 52 cents. But wait another few months, it's gonna look a lot different in the crypto space. But until it all happens, stay patient, stay positive, and let's get rich together. With that said, I'm gonna wrap up this video. I wanna thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.